Hello Guardians and welcome back. Uh, the season has been ongoing for quite a while, and although build content are still flowing, it's not flowing as much as normal because of the burnout for some. But this is not the case for me, as I use this moment to get as creative as possible. Hence why a few of my videos will slowly devolve into a questionable builds down the line, such as today's build. Using the seasonal mods, I combine both solar and stasis together to create an ongoing debuff machine that has crazy good uptime and can deal with the mini bosses and bosses alike like standard procedure. By using the build, you'll get a huge solar damage boost and ease the access debuffs that will keep the build afloat in GMs, fast regenerative abilities, a flexible mods and weapons, and an ease the access setup for all newcomers. Simple, crazy, and powerful. It is what you need to do to achieve all this. To start, you're going to want to have Consecration, where upon sliding and activating your melee, you'll launch a wave of solar scorch towards the target. Pressing the melee button again launches another wave that ignites. And then you want to have Roaring Flames, where final blows with solar abilities increase the damage of your solar abilities. Roaring Flames will play a pivotal role in how strong our melee and grenades get over time, as this will allow us to debuff targets when Revitalizing Blast is active. You won't be using this solely for its time tree effect, but its damage potential it can get when maxed out is nothing to laugh at. Looking to the fragments, Ember of Blistering, defeating targets with solar ignitions grants grenade energy, Ember of Searing, defeating Scorch targets grants melee energy and creates fire sprite, Ember of Sharp, where your solar ignition spreads Scorch to others, and Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. As the usage of Pyrogale gauntlets will be quite high throughout the build, it's pretty easy to build into what the build will require. You must have Ember of Searing and Ashes on hand, as these together will allow our strength stat to regenerate much faster than normal. A shower is also important for spreading this effect far and wide, while Blistering is a 50-50, as our discipline stat is already at tier 10, and we'll be using the fusion grenades that have already a low cooldown attached to them anyways. For me, it does help, as I can apply debuffs via Revitalize and Blast consistently when I trigger this buff, and having it on hand with my Consecration available will allow much wider reward upon action. For mods and stats, both resilience and discipline will be focused on as key objectives. We do also have strength to focus on as well, but this stat alone won't need a huge boost unlike the others. Our resilience stat is at a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction against enemy groups. I have added the art resistance mod for a 15% art resistance when facing art based enemies. This is generally all you need for the section, and it does not require anything more of importance from there. Your selection of barricades are simply down to you. Our discipline is at tier 10, which will grant us a 37 second cooldown using fusion grenades. The following is chosen because of its fast regen cooldown, and also how useful this will be when paired up with Power Gale and Warm Flames effect. As we have Ember of Shards effect available, you can leave the following stat how it is, and just invest the rest of the mod slot towards your strength stat instead. For me, I like to maximize everything I do, as I want to make this process straightforward. So having grenade kickstart for a 16.2% to a 45% grenade buff, bomber for a 12% boost, and distribution for a 4% boost sounds to be the most easiest way to support the build passively. A strength on the other hand has a tier 5 stat for a 1 minute 16 cooldown. With Ember Searing on hand, this may get reduced much further as you're playing, but having momentum transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff will greatly benefit the build for the user through passive means, while Ember Searing does the heavy lifting. Now in this section here, we'll be covering the armor charges and additional mods. Charge up times 2 will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play, while stacks and stacks will increase orbs collected by 2. And next, adding the Solar Siphon and Powerful Attraction mod will make it easier to collect and create orbs of power around us. Then having both Special and Heavy Ammo Finder mods will benefit the two stasis weapons we'll heavily be using. For weapons, we have Aegis Scepter, which is an exotic stasis trace rifle. The following weapon is one of the best and probably one of the perfect stasis weapons to use when you want a consistent stasis slow and freeze on hand. Although it should be paired with his stasis counterpart, Combining the following weapon with Solar allows us to create a powerful one combo technique when fully in action. The weapon becomes even more better when you have the Catalyst unlocked, hence why it's going to be very important to have when using the build as well. For Heavy, we have the Cold Comfort Rocket Launcher with Envious Assassin and Chill Clip. Heavy can be either Stasis or Solar, since the core weapons being used will be primarily primary and secondary. However, having a Stasis Rocket Launcher comes with some pros. 
But firstly, if you have a chill clip rocket launcher, you can use this to quickly apply slows to targets and also trigger a number of buffs once our seasonal mods are active. But secondly, this also saves ammo when using your trace rifle since chill clip rocket launcher will activate on impact. Our trace rifle will only activate its effect if a target has been slowed after a kill or if we activate its catalyst effect first. But thirdly, such a weapon is going to be powerful when used against mini bosses who are agile, etc. So once again, combining two exotics into one and then enhancing the synergy effect they both hold via these seasonal mods will create a magical outcome that some players will simply overlook. A solo and status both have their pros and cons to them, with their pros being shared around the ability to quickly dispatch enemies the moment they spawn. While having one of these effects in action does carry a user from start to finish, having another similar ability combined with the outer will allow the build to cover more ground than given. The Pirate Gale Gauntlets are loved by the community because of its simple design and the huge damage potential it can get up to. Aegis Scepter is amazing for dealing with mini bosses and enemies alike once you get its catalyst going or even just general kills. And even without it, the free slow slash freeze effect is something worth investing in. Combining the two simply creates a powerful combo that can nuke high level enemies with little sweat involved. So for example, a flint striker, killing trigger, and razor precision allows my weapon to apply radiant to ourselves and also apply scorch onto targets. Using this with revitalizing blast will allow my weapons and abilities to debuff targets and inflict higher damage. The magic though comes from torch, where if I apply status debuff to a target, I can increase my damage by an extra 5%. Since Aegis can freeze or slow those affected by it, and since we can use the catalyst special to uber freeze targets on the spot, and since we can use the Hell the Storm and Pillar of Ice seasonal mods for extra support, you get in the end a build designed around easy access of debuffing enemies and then applying a huge damage buff towards enemies to potentially one-shot them. And I say potentially, as it can one-shot in GMs against champions if you make sure Aegis and Pygods both work at the same time. And this is what I like about build crafting, as anyone can do this and you don't even need to follow the exact exotics to achieve it. In fact, you can swap out Aegis for a Chill Clip Fusion instead, and then you can swap out Power Girl for Halify instead. Damage might be less than the original, but you're still getting a 1 to 1, able to create the following. Can this be used for next season as well? Of course. It's only tied down by the seasonal mods being used, and you only lose the debuffs applied, but even then, the damage is still quite incredible to use. This is quite a great build for those who want to experiment and keep experimenting in game content just to see how far certain builds can work in game. Honestly, this is a great one time use build for this season or even the next season if you like. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below. While at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. I have more stuff like this than I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.